The intensity and speed is forcing us to consume into the void. The rational, critical thinking is slowly taking a back seat. A good reference to this is The Time Machine, a film about a scientist who travels uh, through time itself, where in the film he decides to go 800,000 years into the future. The mad scientist, as described by his friends, note the word mad, as sometimes the madness can drive one into a sphere of brilliance. When one is clearly labelled insane, sometimes it can point to some truth or idea, but so far their thoughts are into the future that the rational people label them as crazy in the sphere of now. Back to our film where our mad scientist travels into the future from 1910. The scientist takes the time machines lever and pushes it into the future, stopping at August 16th, 1966. He starts to hear sirens around uh, and he gets out and looks around to see what is happening. He meets the son of one of his old friends, who he himself is now in his 60s. They have a discussion about going underground because of the impending war. Now this is one of the signs that we're already seeing in real life. Wars are pulling apart our countries and we're heading into a fast rate of the destruction of the civilized world. Money, greed, lack of abundance is driving us to hate each other and feel no empathy with what is happening around us. We keep ourselves sane by using the rat race as the perfect excuse for not doing anything unless it benefits us. I fear it might be too late before we start to care to change things. Let's hope not. When our scientist notices all the explosions around him, he rushes back to the time machine. He pushes his lever hard in hesitation. He travels into the year 802,701 AD, where mankind has completely changed. Rid of all technology and ego, he meets a new race, Eloi, a society of childlike adults. They live in small communities inside large and futuristic yet slowly deteriorating buildings. They're not working and they're on a diet of raw vegan fruits. Now, am I crazy enough to say that some of this is already happening? There have been many cases of people ridding themselves of city life to go live in small communities or live off the land with basic needs. This was highlighted in the TV series Kevin MacLeod's Escape to the Wild where several families break away to live in remote areas, totally abandoning civilized life. The idea of raw food is making its way into our lives through documentaries and food bloggers. A good example is the documentary Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. We're not saying that these are bad. We ourselves live off our plant-based diet and we feel the benefits of not eating meat and dairy. But we are saying that the comparison of where we're heading to is very canny with the film's future. We're seeing the results of excessive economic growth, damaging our minds, our bodies, and the environment to try and literally push us into a different way of thinking. Whether this is good or bad, we don't know at the minute. The film might lead most of us to think that the idea of self-destruction won't reach our generations or generations of generations. However, what a great misconception. Our route clearly points to the era where humanity loses control of thinking and embraces the idea of pure experience, pure selfish experience. Watching that film is like peering into a crystal ball. We are seeing the future evolve right in front of our eyes. A society that forces us to live without empathy. We see that Eloy have no idea what to do when there's a girl drowning. Ergo, no empathy. Now, if we compare this to modern day society, we can see this happening everywhere around us. We've made the laws of suing each other really easy and the laws of helping each other very difficult. And it's no surprise that people aren't helping each other. We're more focused on ourselves nowadays. We have become afraid of doing anything. There is another scene where the scientist walks into what is supposedly their library. Uh, he explores the library and tries to open up one of the books when he realizes that the book crumbles in his hand. And at that point, 
the scientist figures out what is happening. The Eloi have no idea what the books are and what to do with them. This points to a generation that doesn't read and shows no regard to the consequence of passing down knowledge. In our case, our language is being trimmed down, words are being abbreviated and shortened to the level of three or four characters. The dictionary is always taking words out every year and adding useless nouns that have no right to be there. A lot of us are glued to our phones and forget about the outside world. We're using social media slowly to teach us to become I am God. A world that is completely obsessed with their own self-interests. We love this quote from Plato's Phaedrus, as it reminds us of the current Google generation. The invention of yours will create a great forgetfulness in the learners' souls, because they will not use their memories. They will trust to the external written characters and not remember of themselves. Your disciples will be hearers of many things, but have learned nothing. They will appear to be omniscient, but generally know nothing. They will be tiresome company, having the show of wisdom without its reality. How interesting is this? Because we're seeing a lot of this happening now, where we can just pick up our phones, Google something, and we automatically think that we're a doctor, or we think that we're a yoga expert, or we think that you know we're a nutritionist. And a lot of these things that we're, uh, we're examining take a lot of time and a lot of knowledge and a lot of studying to become experts in. But this quote just completely summarizes everything that's happening. So the last part of the article is about acceptance. It seems to help soothe our trail of madness as we leap from one extreme to the other. Humankind seems to only want to embrace one idea while rejecting everything else. Science versus religion, white versus black, we're a constant struggle in finding balance in our lives. And clearly that is the problem, not the rat race, nor pure experience, but one that may sit deep in the very fabric of our souls. We're always pushing to fill this void, but we may feel contentment if we start to embrace it. Thank you for listening. That was our first article. I hope you enjoyed it.